Folks, welcome back to Nostalgianomics. Today's topic is one of the biggest debated topics in this entire hobby, and it always has everyone at each other's throats. I don't know if people just feel this strongly about these things, or if they just like to argue, but I see it every day in my Discord. Um, even Rudy Alpha Investments recently made a video sort of on this topic, and so I wanted to make my own. I wanted to give my own take because I don't have a dog in this race. I literally do a little bit of all of it, and so I can be unbiased, and I can give you literally the goods and the bads of each individual route, and you can make your own decisions because I see other YouTubers talk about these types of things, and their bias just always comes out. It's not that they're trying to influence people, I don't think. I think a lot of them are good guys. It's just their bias comes out because it's what they know, it's what they do, it's what they're successful with, but they fail to mention a lot of the negatives behind it. And so what I'm talking about is buying and selling all this fancy, shiny, cardboard, collectibles, Pokemon stuff, right? And... There's a million different places you can do this, right? We can pick eBay, TCG Player, you can get on the live stuff like Whatnots and Drips, right? You can sell it through your own website. You can do in-person shows and events like Collecticons and local card shows. You can try to um, get in a bunch of Facebook groups and Discord groups and sell in the buy, sell trade sections. Um, you can make, you know, local deals in person. Um, but there's all kinds of different ways you can go about this whole thing. And honestly... Depending on how large or small of an operation you are, depending on how much time you want to put in, might you know have you pick different ways over others uh, across your journey through this hobby. If you're just kind of a casual selling stuff here and there, if you're trying to make a side income, if you're trying to build it into an established business, all those things are things you need to take into account. So let's go ahead and start off with the evil ones, right? The, the Ebays, the TCG players, even the whatnots and drifts. Anywhere that charges you a commission and a fee. Evil. They're all evil, right? Because they've went out and they've done multiple millions of dollars in marketing, I mean, probably billions at this point, to get the most amount of buyers and eyes on their site to find your items worldwide. And because these companies have done that, yes, they charge a commission, a fee to put you in front of all those different buyers. And because of that, on average, you are gonna get more for your money on the Ebays, TCG players, and things like that than you are selling yourself off of those platforms. It's just the facts. Now, people will say, well, yeah, Alex, but the fees eat into your profit so much that I can get just as much or more selling somewhere else. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Here's the thing though. Those platforms make it extremely easy. Easy to scale, right? It's very hard to scale you know, individual deals on Facebooks and, and discords and in person and things like that. I mean, you're limited to how many, how much time you have in the day to go back and forth and message all these different people. Whereas eBay, I mean, you could have hundreds, thousands of orders come in a day. I mean, obviously we're talking, you know, gigantic stores, gigantic numbers, but it, we're, we're just talking what's possible. I mean, to scale a business, trying to make individual deals and message people and send them pictures back and forth, it's not scalable. And so if you're trying to do this at any sort of higher level, Usually you're going to have to move off, you know, the Discord buy, sell trades, the Facebook buy, sell trades and move into an actual platform, whether it be an eBay TCG player or whatnot, a drip, whether it be your own website, something like that, because it's just too hard to scale. You don't, unless you're hiring employees to like make all these deals for you every day, it's too hard to scale because you don't have enough time in a day. There's not enough manpower to, to make all those, those individual deals. Now. Yes, the bads of eBay, there are fees, right? You're going to pay about a 13% fee. Um, if you, uh, you know, get top rated seller, you do get a discount that. If you sign up for a store, which is a monthly fee, right? You have to sign up for a store. It costs you monthly. But if you're doing enough volume, that monthly fee comes down to like pennies and it saves you more off your fees. So it actually becomes uh, more of a benefit if you sell enough each month. And so you can actually get those fees down like under 12% sometimes. Uh, on some items. So like, you know, in the 11s and 12s is what you can actually get those fees down to. Now, remember, okay, this is important. That 11, 12% fee, even 13% fee, that's for everything, right? That's for the selling fee and the payment processing fee. Even if you make deals off of eBay, TCG Player, these other sites, right? On the Facebooks and the Discords, and they, they do not want to pay you friends and family because they do not trust you and they want to pay you goods and services, you're going to pay a 2.9% fee plus 30 cents, all right? That's what you're going to pay through PayPal, yeah, Venmo, goods and service, whatever you want to use. So that eBay fee, now it doesn't look like 11, 12, 13%. Now it looks like 8, 9, 10% is really all you're paying to eBay, okay? And so do a little math in your head. 
If you scale up your business and you're doing $100,000 in sales a year, it's costing you eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to go on eBay instead of goods and services on a different platform, doing all that other work, messaging people, making all these deals, having to go to some third-party shipping company like a Shippo or somewhere else and, and print your own labels when eBay it's just, it's just automatically generates one-touch click. And so... Eight, nine, ten thousand dollars a year. You're talking on a hundred thousand in sales. You're talking like hundreds a month. A few hundred dollars a month is all it's really costing you to put your items in front of the most buyers, right? To actually be able to scale up and not have to deal with each person individually, and to uh, you know like the ease, just having the ease of uh, all the systems they have, tracking your analytics. You know, really easy to list items. You track your items. Um, very easy to. Uh, you know, deal with uh, any type of buyer, buyer's messages, things like that. You're going to have the most buyers find you. And so those are all the benefits of sites like those, right? And TCG players, the same way. Uh, what not drip fees, those are a little lower. So those are a little lower. But then again, those are live selling platforms. It costs your time. So there, there's, we're going to get into the drips and the whatnots and the, and, the, and the live selling, like, you know, which I do, you know, pack breaks. It costs your time, right? You are working. Same thing with live events. It costs your time, right? So every minute you're on camera, Right, that, that's time that you're working. Whereas if you're just listing these items, you, you work for a little bit in the beginning, right? Maybe a minute or two to list the item, but then you're done, right? You let it sit, and when it sells, you ship it. Well, when you're trying to sell things in person or on camera, you're, you're literally working for all those minutes and hours that you are on, right? It's also the, the downside to selling in person, it shows, right? So when you go to a show and sell, well, usually you have to price sticker every single card, right? So that takes a lot of time before the show, right? Pricing every single card, pricing your binders, maybe setting up your pack, setting up your displays, getting all that ready. Then you get to the show and you actually have to set up everything, get everything looking nice and presentable, you know, re you do the whole retail thing, right? Then you have to stand there and sell all day long for 10 hours probably. Then when the show's done, you have to take all your stuff down and go home and then redo it again the next day. And so it's a lot, it's very time consuming, right? So you're actually working for your dollars instead of just listing something and letting it sit, right? So these are the, these are kind of the downsides of selling on a live selling platform or selling in person is you are trading a lot of your time. Um, now the benefits, obviously, the live selling platforms, the fees are lower, but they're still fees, right? You're still going to pay some fees. I think, you know, depending on what kind of deals you have set up, six, seven, eight, percent fee usually plus your pay payment processing fee so anywhere from uh you know nine i don't know eight nine ten ten percent fee something like that um all in on those live selling platforms which is less right but again you're paying less you're getting a little you know less eyes than you would on like an ebay tcg player and you are trading your time so uh you know just keep keep that in mind um and also you know guys i'm going through it right now it's, it's hard to build it's hard to build new following even you know the good following i built here on youtube it's hard to build up a following to get enough eyes on your channel on these live selling platforms like a whatnot or a drip um, to get enough people there that actually want to buy the items that you have that night. So sometimes they're going to go a lot lower than market. I've seen it happen. I've, I've had it happen. And sometimes you're going to be sitting there and, you know, with nothing really going on, no sales really happening, um, just kind of burning time uh, because no one's buying. And so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, live selling, right? Shout out to Old Card Shop. Old Card Shop, he makes his living basically a hundred percent almost through live shows. Like that's what he does. He he's always vending at you know different local card shows at Collecticons, and that's what he's built his business model around, and it works for him. Um, benefits of of, uh, of live shows. You have a lot of people that walk up to you with their collections, right, and with their cards, and they want to do trades or they want to sell you their stuff, and you can offer them uh, you know below market, and you can literally like before their eyes buy it for you know 60, 70, 80 percent of market and sell right to the guy standing next to you for 100% of market and literally make a margin at a show where you literally just bought the item, no time put into listing or, or trying to find buyers or trying to go through buy, sell trades or trying to you know sell it live things. Literally, that's how easy it can be. Um, again, though, you are going to be the standing there all day. You are going to be trading your time. Um, so, you know, it's all about what, you, what, what kind of thing you want to do, what kind of lifestyle. Also, you are going to have a lot more expenses with shows. Now, it is going to depend on which show you go to, but you gotta pay for the tables. If you haven't bought your cases, which costs money, but you, you have to rent the cases, okay? Um, you have to travel, whether you, it's, lo it's local and you can drive there, or you gotta fly there. Um, and if you fly there, you have to drive far away, I'm sure you have to get a hotel. Um, where are you gonna be eating? Are you just gonna pack PB&Js every day? You're probably gonna be eating out when you're there. Um, you know, and there's, there's a lot of expenses that go into that. Now, people will say, well, yeah, Alex, but I can do cash deals, look. We're not going to get into all those unscrupulous things that people may or may not do, 
with the whole, you know, cheating the government and collecting ta- cash and not claiming it. Um, but that is always part of it. If you want to go that direction, I do not. Um, I, I, I want to keep Uncle Sam happy. I don't want to be in federal prison. <laughs> but um, a lot of people say that, uh, you know, they can get cash and it, it makes it more worth it because they're not paying the taxes and they're not paying any fees and things like that. Um, but otherwise, other than, other than the cash thing, it's a, it's a lot of expenses to do live shows. And you are usually going to take under market for your cards. Usually people are going to look up the Ebays and TCG players and they are going to want to discount off of that because they know that you're not paying fees, right? They know that you don't have to ship the card. They know that you want to move it. They, they know you want it all. So usually you are going to get a little less for your cards. And so it's it's almost the same as selling on eBay. The only thing the only thing that might save you is them paying cash over using like a PayPal or, or a credit card or something like that. But again, it's it's... It's all about how you want to run things. So there are goods and bads there depending on how you want to do it. Now, let's talk about like the Pokey NE thing, the, the, your, his own website. Guys, if you haven't noticed yet, Brian is a workaholic. <laughs> and I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm, I don't think he would take it that way. The dude, he mean, he makes videos about how he does the Gary V method. I mean, he'll post 10, 12 YouTube shorts and, and TikToks a day. I mean, I've seen the, t- the dude post like three YouTube videos in the same day, right? All while he's running his gigantic operation that he already runs for his business and his website. The dude's always working. And that's kind of what it takes, right? You, you can't just start up a website and think people are going to trust it. Think people are going to, you know, you're going to have visitors go there. And um, even if you can, you know, sell products at the same cost or you get a little under eBay and you can make more after because you're not, not paying a lot of fees, um, you have to get the traffic there. And so it takes a lot of time to grow that. It takes a lot of time to make all those different shorts, all these different marketing. Are you going to pay for marketing? Um, where are you going to, you know, find these customers? Are you going to go into a bunch of different discords and Facebooks and try to promote your site and get people on there? Are you going to promote it through your eBay and TCG player store, like send cards and every single order you do? It just takes time. It takes energy and effort to build up that site. And even then, some people still don't use it, right? And so you have to constantly be, you know, putting it in front of people's face, constantly be sharing your links. So it's very time consuming to build a site. Not only that, the site isn't free. So when people say, well, eBay is 13%, I can build my own site and not pay those fees. Wrong. That's 100% wrong. First off, it costs money for a website. Depending on how how many orders you do, um, I'm sure like someone as big as Brian, you know, Pokey NE, he probably has, ton- I can't imagine how much he, orders he has, but you got to get, you know, higher levels of stores through like a Wix or a Shopify or whoever you're using uh, based on how much business you do, right? And so you, you, have, you have a yearly subscription you have to pay to the website, to the hosting, all that type of stuff, first and foremost, all right? People aren't paying you through PayPal goods and, or uh, friends and family, Venmo friends and family. They're paying through goods and services. They're paying through credit cards, through Apple Pay. So you're still paying 2.9% plus 30 cents fee. And so that eBay fee that I pay, which like I said, I, I have a store, right? That comes out to like pennies on the dollar, like or pennies, like because I, I sell enough items each month. Um, and I, I'm also a top rated seller. So I only pay like 11 to 12% actual fees after everything's said and done. All right. So take that 2.9% plus 30 cents out that you're going to pay on a website still too. I'm only paying like eight, nine percent. Okay, so it's only really costing eight, nine percent more to sell on eBay than it is to sell on your own website to to build it. Right. Make all your own listings, like make everything look pretty. Right. Make sure all the all the clicking, all the cart, everything works properly. Right. So you have to do all that stuff. You have to go do all the work to get all the people there. Right. Do all the marketing, actually get the buyers there. Right. Then you have to go do all the shipping yourself. Go to a third party shipping company. Right. Make sure you do all the shipping there. And. Like I said, you're doing all of the, and a lot of the times these sites sell for less than what the items go for on eBay. And that's why you'll have people in Discord say, why would you guys buy that off eBay or TCG player? This site has it for, for way less. Okay, that's being a good buyer. But the thing is, the reason that site has it for less is because if it was the same price as eBay, people would say, well, I'm not going to deal with this random independent site. I'll just buy off eBay. It's much easier. I'm more protected, whatever, whatever, right? And so put it in terms of large numbers, right? You're selling 100 grand a year. You're selling a million a year, right? The amount it's costing you for the, the little bit of extra fees after all the other costs are taken out, it might only count to like five, six, seven percent extra after everything's said and done, right? And not only that, eBay, I forgot to mention that. eBay, TCG player, these sites, whatnot, they take care of all the taxes for you. You don't have to worry about the sales tax, right? Whereas with your own site, 
you got to make sure to keep track of all the sales tax, if it's in-state, if it's out-of-state, if you're above the, any of the nexus laws of all the different states, and I can get into that, the taxes stuff, but eBay does a lot for you. So you wipe your hands there, you just print out your, your form at the end of the year, you give it to your accountant or you do it yourself, and that's it. It's literally that eBay keeps track of all your taxes, your shipping, your fees, everything for you. It sh shows you your net profit. It shows you your sales. Very easy. You don't have to do any of that yourself. And like I said, you're paying five, six, seven percent extra of what it's going to cost to run your own website. And so, hundred thousand in sales, it's going to cost you like five, six, seven thousand dollars over the course of a year. That's like five, six hundred bucks a month. So you have to ask yourself: Is it worth five, six hundred dollars a month for me to go out and do all that work to build a site, or do I just? Take the nice easy route selling TCG player eBay, pay that extra little bit and not deal with all that. I can't answer that question for you. Maybe, maybe it's more worth it, you know, because there are other benefits like, you know, technically you own your customers, right? You can get their emails, you can um, have them sign up for newsletters, um, you know, and, and, you know, get notifications when you have new products in stock. So there are benefits to it, right? It's just about what route you want to take, right? There's no right or wrong here. I'm just trying to give you the goods and the bads. Last thing is the Discord groups and the Facebook groups, right? Well, you know, a lot of them do very well. They have good moderators. They, uh, they make sure to, uh, to ban the people if anyone's ever had a bad transaction or got scammed. So they really try to keep out the scammers. But there is always a, a, a you know, higher chance of getting scammed. You know, a lot of times PayPal or these places will protect you from there. Um, you know, but it's, it's just time consuming, right? It's just very time consuming to, you know, scroll through all these Facebooks and Discords and it's, it's so, you know, all, it's all over the place, right? There's posts, there's, there's people talking, there's, you know, it's very hard to navigate uh, exactly what you're looking for. It is going to be very time consuming, right? Then you have to go back and forth with the buyer, all the messages, right? Set up the shipping, how you're going to pay, all that. And it's just, it, it's near impossible to actually scale an operation on the buying or the selling side strictly through a Discord or a Facebook. Now, again, this goes back to what size you want to be. If you're just selling off parts of your collection here and there to like buy other stuff or you just don't like it anymore, it might work, right? You don't, you don't, you have the time, right? You don't, you only sell a few things. Great. Might work for you, right? And if you can get people you trust, you can sell just friends and family, zero fees at all, just shipping. Great. Um, but if you're, you know, trying to scale it all and like a, a good side income or even get eventually get to the full time, it, guys, it's near impossible. It's near impossible to have enough time in a day to constantly be going back and forth and, you know, sharing pictures, sharing this. Can I see more pictures? How do you want to pay? Well, here, I, I, it, it's crazy, right? Um, same thing with in person. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to drive around all day and meet all these different people all around town and, you know, spend time and gas and miles in your car and, and constantly be trying to meet up. Oh, this person's late. I got to sit in this parking lot and wait for him, wasting time here. It, you can't scale these things, but they're great for people who are new or just doing small one time transactions here and there. Um, but, you know, it just like, here's kind of my game plan is what I would do for you. And again, I don't care what you do. Don't, I don't have a dog in this race. I do it all. It's great when you're starting out, right? When you don't have a lot going on, you're selling a few things here and there. Maybe start out trying to make some local deals on Facebook or on Discords, right? If people live close to you. And then, you know, you can step up and, you know, you can make some deals on the, on the Discords and the, and the Facebooks. So you're still going to have a lot of buyers in those, a lot of those groups, right? Where you can, you know, just do shipping. Maybe you can do friends and family. Maybe, maybe goods and services. Maybe you're paying like a 3% fee. Big deal. And, um, you know, as you step up, as you want to maybe, if you want to grow more and you want to, you know, have, you know, consistency in sales and make a good side income, Maybe you do want to start to build an eBay or TCG player store, right? Or maybe you do like making content or you are, you are good at marketing and you do have time to put into it and you want to grow something for yourself. You can start growing your own site, right? You can start putting tons of effort into growing your own site, getting buyers there, um, you know, getting people to, to leave reviews so people know you're trusted, um, you know, getting Instagram behind it, whatever you want to do, you can go that route. And then, you know, if you really want to scale and become, you know, you can definitely move into, you know, all the, all the bigger platforms as well. But the whole point of this video is, guys, there's goods and bads of all of them, right? No, no place or no company is evil for charging a fee or a commission for what they provide, right? And the, the more they provide, obviously the more fees they are gonna, they're gonna cost because it's, it's more, it makes sense for you because you're gonna get those fees back in the higher dollar uh, items, in more sales, whatever it may be. And so uh, that's kind of my thoughts on the whole thing. Don't, don't, don't get all freaked out about the fees. And as far as taxes go, I don't touch on taxes on this, on this channel. Consult a tax advisor. I will say this though, anyone throwing around these gigantic tax numbers, like, I don't, they go look up in the law, like whatever the law says, like 25, 35% taxes on collectibles or whatever it may be, guys, 
I'm just gonna say myself, and I'm sure everyone else in this business doesn't pay 35% on everything they sell, right? The reason for that is, when you run a business, there's tons of things you can write off. Everything you buy, everything you buy that you, for inventory is a write off, right? Anything that you can use for your business is a business expense, right? You buy your shipping labels, you buy your shipping materials, right? You, you, you grade with PSA, like any single thing you do that has to do with that business is a write-off, right? To get that, that profit down to where you only pay that percent tax fee on what profits you make, not how much you sell. And so when you see people that sell like $100,000, they may only be showing $10,000 in profit. I don't know. I'm just making up a number. But so then you're only paying that taxes on 10000 right? Whereas, you know, if you were to pay taxes on all of it, every single thing you sell, yeah, it could get out of hand. Um, but like I said, if you're going to get this serious, talk to a tax accountant, figure out all the different methods you can do to work around all those crazy tax bills. I've never paid anywhere near those crazy figures that people show out there. I have an accountant that does it all for me. And, um, like I said, it's all in the up and up. It's not like I have some back door or back alley accountant. It's all in the up and up, guys. It's just, it's part of running a business, right? And every single business, every single investment out there, you will pay taxes on at some point in time. If you invest in a Roth IRA, you're putting in money that you're already taxed on, right? If you're putting in a for, uh, you know traditional 401k, traditional IRA, you're putting in money that you haven't been taxed on. And when you take that money out, guess what? You're getting taxed on it right? Um, when you go to sell a house or buy a house, whatever, you're paying the real estate commissions, you're paying closing costs, you're paying inspections, you're paying other types of fees through the you know mortgage company. You're always going to pay something. It doesn't matter. If you're a regular brokerage account selling stocks, you're going to pay capital gains tax. If you, um, you know, any business you, you run, you're going to pay taxes on your profits. You're going to pay, you know, self-employment taxes. Like, Guys, you cannot run from taxes. You're gonna get taxed, you're gonna pay fees every single place you go. Do not let that be a deterrent because here's the thing, everyone is paying them. Every big business you see operating on all these big platforms selling all this money, they're all paying taxes and guess what? They're all making a living, they're all getting by, they're all doing just fine. So if they can all figure out a way to do it and the margins are there for them, the margins are probably there for you too. So uh, that's all I really got on the subject, guys. I hope it helps some of you out there trying to navigate, you know, especially getting into this hobby. And uh, hey, you can always just start off doing some of them, right? Start off doing a few. Maybe you like some, maybe you don't like some. And you kind of, you know, you, you can kind of figure out which way you want to take your business after you try some out. Um, you know, just be careful. If you're, if you're venturing off of uh, you know, the trusted platforms with the buyer protections, just be careful. Know your rights, know your protections, and um, only take the amount of risk that you're comfortable with. So, uh, Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not yet. As always, I'm Nostalgianomics, and I'll be back here in a new video soon. I'm out.